Welcome, ladles and jelly spoons, to Kai Mathie's YouTube channel. The YouTube channel that revives your childhood memories and ignites your passion for classic video games. With content so engaging, it might just make your controller jump with joy. But we can't make any promises for your house plans. You're in a good mood. I haven't even had my partner best yet. Speaking of which, uh, have you seen Keith? See you. Ooh, thank God. Engage. At last, someone who knows how to brew and doesn't talk your ear off about badgers. Welcome, ladles and jelly spoons, to this month's retrospective review. This month, turning 20 years old, we have a 2004 action adventure game developed by Nintendo R&D One and published by Nintendo for the Game Boy Advance handheld console. Metroid Zero Mission, a remake of the original Metroid game that was released for the Nintendo Entertainment System back in 1986. Metroid Zero Mission was designed to retell the story of Samus Aran's first encounter with the Metroids on the planet Zebus, with updated graphics, more accessible control schemes and new gameplay elements that were introduced in later Metroid titles. Metroid Zero Mission appears in the book A Thousand and One Video Games You Must Play Before You Die by Tony Mott, the phenomenal editor of Edge magazine. Um, just because you're off tea duty don't mean you can nick my bit. Now then, did you know that you can play the original NES Metroid once you've completed Zero the Mission? The game incorporates a rich side-scrolling environment that players explore whilst collecting power-ups to enhance Samus's armoured suit, granting her new abilities and access to previously unreachable areas. The gameplay focuses on exploration, puzzle solving and combat against alien creatures and space pirates. One of significant enhancements in Zero Mission compared to the original game is the inclusion of a map system to help with navigation, a feature that was absent in the NES version. Metroid Zero Mission also introduced new story elements and areas to explore, including an extended epilogue that takes place after the main story is complete, offering players a deeper insight into Samus's backstory and the Metroid universe. The game was well received by critics and fans alike for its polished graphics, refined gameplay and the way it successfully modernised a classic title for a new generation of players. Zero Mission was celebrated for its innovative content, stunning graphics, engaging gameplay and advancements beyond its precursor. Although it faced some critique for its brief duration, the game earned numerous awards, securing a spot at 46 in Nintendo Power's Top 200 Games and being declared the 9th best Game Boy Advance game by IGN. It achieved sales of over 439,000 units in the United States and 69,000 in Japan by February of 2005. The game later made its way to the Wii U Virtual Console, launching in Japan in 2014, PAL regions in 2015 and North America in 2016. Yoshio Sakimoto, a seasoned Nintendo professional with a long history with the Metroid series, directed Metroid Zero Mission. He was part of the franchise from its inception on the Nintendo Entertainment System and contributed to every entry except Metroid 2 The Return of Samus. Sakimoto was the lone original Metroid development team member to take part in Zero Mission's creation. Following the release of Metroid Fusion in 2002, the idea of porting Super Metroid to the Game Boy Advanced was proposed, yet Sakimoto opted to adapt the original Metroid instead. The team aimed to revisit the franchise's origins by basing the game on the NES Classic. Sakimoto noting the significant departure in gameplay and structure with Fusion sought to reintroduce the essence of Metroid to those unfamiliar with the series before Fusion, and to re-narrate Samus's initial adventure. Like the rest of the Metroid games, it has a different ending image depending on how long it took the player to complete the game. Integrating fresh elements into Zero Mission to rejuvenate it whilst preserving the essence of the original Metroid presented a significant challenge. Utilising a modern version of the Fusion engine, Zero Mission did not require development from the ground up, marking the first occasion two Metroid titles were released on the same console. Although connectivity between Metroid Fusion and Metroid Prime on the GameCube was implemented, plans to link Zero Mission with Metroid Prime 2 Echoes were abandoned due to tight development schedules and release date discrepancies. However, connectivity between Metroid Fusion and Zero Mission was successfully included. Beyond revisiting the original Metroid storyline, Zero Mission introduced cinematic sequences to advance the narrative. Sakimoto emphasised the value of story enhancing a game. 
Facing challenges in effectively communicating the plot with minimal dialogue, a staple of the Metroid series, the narrative were reworked to delve deeper into Samus Aran's backstory, utilising cinematics to reveal her memories, thus propelling the story whilst allowing room for interpretation and maintaining an element of mystery. For the first time in the series, players could select from three difficulty levels at the offset, with most challenging level unlocking after completing game. While the original Metroid concluded with a battle against Mother Brain, Zero Mission extends the story with an additional segment featuring Samus in her iconic blue suit. Have you ever dived into the world of Metroid Zero Mission? We'd love to hear your thoughts, so don't hesitate to share them in the comments down below. While you're scrolling, take a moment to explore our other social media platforms. And for those of you who are free of a Sunday evening, don't miss our lads' live streams right here on YouTube from 6pm to 9pm British Standard Time. Needless to say, if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, now's the perfect time to join our community. We're on the verge of hitting our very first milestone, 500 subscribers, don't you know? Thank you to all of you. But before we move on, let's circle back to Metroid Zero Mission. Rumour has it there's a hidden Easter egg in the game that's eluded fans for years. Have any of you found it? Share your theories and discoveries. Space pirates attack a Galactic Federation own space research vessel and seize samples of Metroid creatures. Dangerous floating organisms, Metroids can latch on to any organism and drain its life energy to kill it. The space pirates plan to replicate Metroids by exposing them to beta rays and use the Metroids as biological weapons to destroy all living beings that oppose them. While searching for the stolen Metroids, the Galactic Federation locates the space pirates' base of operations on the planet Zebes. The Federation assaults the planet, but the pirates resist, forcing the Federation to retreat. As a last resort, the Federation decides to send a lone bounty hunter to penetrate the pirate's base and destroy Mother Brain, the mechanical life form that controls the space pirate's fortress and its defenses. Considered the greatest of all bounty hunters, Samus Aran is chosen for the mission. Samus lands on the surface of Zebes and explores the planet traveling through the planet's caverns. She comes across Kraid, an ally of the Space Pirates, and Ridley, the Space Pirates' commander, and defeats them both. Samus finds and destroys Mother Brain. While Samus leaves the planet in her ship, it is attacked by Space Pirates, causing it to crash back onto Zebes near the Space Pirate mothership. With both her ship and power suit destroyed, Samus infiltrates the mothership, leading her to Chozodia, where a Chozo statue offers her a trial. Upon passing the trial, Samus is rewarded with a new fully upgraded power suit. Continuing to explore the mothership, Samus reaches the Mecha Ridley, a robot built in the likeness of Ridley. After defeating it, Samus escapes the planet using one of the Space Pirate's shuttles while the mothership self-destructs. <laughs> Zero Mission received generally favourable reviews. It was lauded as one of the Game Boy Advance best games. Famitsu rated it 34 out of 40, while outlets like Xplay and GamePro praised its engaging gameplay, with GamePro being particularly impressed by its offerings. GameZone noted it exceeded Metroid Fusion in style and addiction. Nintendo World Report and Eurogamer hailed it as a masterpiece and a must-play for the console. The game was celebrated for its fresh content, with Game Informer and OneUp.com admiring the new material and innovations that expanded the original Metroid's legacy. However, its short length drew criticism, described by some including IGN and Eurogamer as a weak one-shot experience that left players wanting more despite its high quality. Despite criticism, Zero Mission earned significant accolades, being ranked 46th in Nintendo Power's Top 200 Games and receiving various Game of the Month and Game of the Year awards by IGN, GameSpot and Electronic Gaming Monthly. It was also awarded Handheld Game of the Year by the Academy of Interactive Arts and Science and praised by official Nintendo Magazine and Nintendo Nintendo Power, the latter naming it the best Game Boy Advance game ever in 2011, IGN also recognised it as the fifth greatest video game remake in 2020. 
Overall, the music of Metroid Zero Mission is celebrated for its ability to blend nostalgia with innovation, offering a soundtrack that respects its roots while providing a fresh and engaging audio experience for both new players and long-time fans of the series. Now, the soundtrack includes iconic themes, Brian Star and North Fair background music, which have been rearranged to take advantage of the advanced sound hardware. These themes not only pay homage to the original compositions, but also bring a new depth and intensity to the game's atmosphere. Shinji Yamamoto, who had been a key composer for the Metroid series along with Minako Hamano and others, worked on the game's music. Their challenge was to update the original Metroid music for the Game Boy Advance, whilst preserving the essence that made the soundtrack so memorable and effective in the original game. They utilised the Game Boy Advance sound capabilities to create richer, more complex arrangements that could still evoke the same emotional response as the 8-bit originals. The music of Zero Mission contributes significantly to the game's immersive experience, with each track carefully crafted to match the mood of various environments Samus Aran explores. From the haunting melodies of the ancient Cherzo ruins to the adrenaline pumping rhythms of boss battles. The soundtrack is a key element of the game's storytelling and world building. Well, that wraps up our retrospective review of Metroid Zero Mission. It's been quite the journey revisiting this classic, seeing how it reshaped the Metroid franchise and exploring its lasting impact on the gaming world. Oh, absolutely, lad. From rich, detailed graphics to the masterfully reimagined soundtrack, Zero Mission has proven itself more than just a simple remake. It's a testament to the original game's vision, enhanced with the polish and depth that modern technology and storytelling could offer. I say, don't forget the gameplay and how it seamlessly blends nostalgia with new mechanics, making it accessible for newcomers and rewarding for veterans. Zero Mission not only plays homage to its roots, but also sets a high bar for remakes. If you enjoyed our look into Metroid Zero Mission, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Your support helps keep us going, don't you know? Follow us on our other social media platforms and join our Sunday streams if you're able so you don't miss out on any of our retro games gaming shenanigans. We've got a lot more video game content on the way. Thanks for watching and until next time I'll leave you with this. If we aren't supposed to eat animals, why are they made of meat? Cheerio, see you next week. <laughs>